So what do you get when a group of ad men form a rock and roll band? Well, Ron Rodemeyer's here to answer that question for us. You get the hot mops, Gene. <laughs> what in the world is a hot mop? Well, funny you should ask. I asked the, the singer Mark Leffler the same thing. And he said it had a couple meanings. They, they took the actual name from a skit by the Jerky Boys. They're these guys that are they're professional pranksters. They had a movie out, and they have some skit about these guys that have hot tar mops. And also, as you'll see, it has another meaning in that pretty much everybody in the band has some sort of weird hairdo. Oh. So, <laughs> so, but, but it's important to make the point that they are not a gimmick band. They're a real good band. They, they really are. I mean, they're, they're, they're these ad guys. They all work together. But the strange thing is, is they got together, and it turns out they're a great band, too. Los Trapeadores Calientes. Well, home and bang. Right from the top, you can tell a Hot Mops concert won't be your average rock and roll show, with a song list that includes rockin' dog, tight pants, and oochie coochie smoochie smoochie. The Hot Mops are like a mirror image of American pop culture, a warped mirror image that is. When you say rockabilly, people don't know exactly what it is, and, and we're not really just straight rockabilly. It's like a, um, it's really bizarre stuff. Psycho surfabilly, I think, is the closest thing we've come to saying. <laughs> what it is. I think we've got a, a real niche in Jackson because I don't think there's anybody else out there that sounds quite like us. It's probably a good thing. In addition to having the most recognizable hairdos around, the Hot Mops have also established a group identity of sorts through a barrage of stylishly tacky promotional items. From posters, to buttons, to business cards, the influence of the musicians' day jobs is easy to spot. Mark, Jeff, Ed, and Tal all work in creative services at Maris West & Baker, a Jackson advertising agency. Having four uh, ad men in the band kind of gives us an unfair advantage as far as promotion. And every day there's something coming out of here uh, for the hot mops. We like doing the, the posters almost as much as the shows. And uh, we do buttons and cards and it's just pretty uh, all media. Kind of saturate the whole. And when they say all media, they're not kidding. Guitarist Ed Sultan has recently placed a Hot Mops homepage on the World Wide Web for internet surfers. But Sultan's biggest non-musical contribution to the group is Jeter, the wild-eyed troll that serves as the official Hot Mops logo. I, I started working on that uh, because I thought uh, Denny needed something funny on his drum, you know, something kind of uh, started out being like a kind of a 50s tattoo looking thing. That's what, that's why it has dice on it. And, and the more I worked on it, the more it started looking like Mark. So. <laughs> While promotion has given the band an edge, the primary draw is still the music. Most of the obscure covers are chosen by drummer Denny Burks, who is the only band member not working in advertising. An accomplished jazz and rock drummer who works at a record store during the day, Denny finds hot mop material in his huge collection of old 45s. When you guys are deciding on music to play, what is it about a song that makes it a hot mop? So this, like, this is one you know you want to cover. Uh, it's got a jump, you know? I mean, it's got to have like a... Uh... It's got to have a, a ton of reverb, first of all. It's got to have lots of guitar solos, obviously, for uh, Ed and Mr. Lopez, as we call him. It's got to have that. It's got to have an element of comedy to it, also, because our lead singer, Mark, as you noticed, is quite the nut. It's got to have that. So with the power, speed, and volume of a big boss Ford, the Hot Mops have arrived, unleashed on an unsuspecting public. The only question, is Mississippi ready for psycho surf ability? Yeah, it's ready. Yeah, it's ready. Yeah, it's very ready. Um, the answer is yes. Because that music kind of was, came from here, like, what is this, 95? It kind of came from here almost 40 years ago, and we're bringing it back in a big way, honey. Let me be your man. I'll do everything. 
everything I can. Wow, they are really good. So are all those old songs, or do they play new songs? Well, most of them are old, obscure 60s songs, but they also play some covers that are obscure 80s and 90s songs that most people don't realize aren't originals. But they have started to write their own songs, and they hope to be co co cutting a 7-inch record, a 45, pretty soon. 45? Yeah, they're kind of a 45 type of band. Some of those songs didn't seem that old to me. Yeah. <laughs> walking through the door, she started looking at me like I was a big boy. Her eyes started bugging just like a frog. She said, wait a minute, daddy, I don't get stalled. Break it down. Break it down. But wait a minute, daddy, you're no child. 